Hello, Anime Nyan here, and today we're going to be making porn in Blender. There is such a taboo around the subject, however porn is something natural, and I just think that there's a lack of resources around the subject. So today we're just going to be creating outfits. So we're going to be attaching outfits to our nude models. So why do we need clothing? Because clothing looks sexy. And the second outfit we're going to be doing today uh, is this outfit right here. So we're going to be attaching uh, this outfit, um, the bra and underwear. Um, and yes, so it's going to be also uh, moving with the skeleton. So I'm going to teach you how to transfer weights, um, though it's pretty simple. Okay, so without further ado, there is a link to a NSFW Blender Discord in the description below. So please, if you have any questions whatsoever or you want to ask me anything about it, so please come to this Discord here and you can DM me right here. Um, yeah, so there are really friendly and talented people on this server and they would love to answer your questions. Okay, so if you want to follow uh, my method here, so basically uh, I'm going to be using some uh, outfits from first Smut Base and second I'm going to be using an outfit from Dead by Daylight. So that's an Unreal Engine game. So first things first, uh, what are the software prerequisites? Number one, you have to type in new model into Google or UE Viewer, and you want to click on that first link right here. So from here, you want to press download, and you want to download the version for your system. So that would be Windows 32 version for me. So I just click on that there, but I won't do that because I've already downloaded it. Okay, so uh, from here, what you want to do is you want to, uh, so you've downloaded UModel, and I'm just going to show you. So basically, you should get this zip file right here, and what you want to do is right click extract here or extract files and you should get all these files here that we'll have to use later. Okay, now the second thing you need is you need the PSK PSA importer. Okay, so you want to type in PSA PSK Beth ZZ uh, GitHub. Okay, and you want to click on the first link, link right here. Okay, so from here you want to just scroll down to current branch latest and you want to right click on 280 direct link save link as, and then you just want to save here. So obviously I've already downloaded it, um, but you'll need to download that as well. The third thing you'll need is you want to just type in Animnyan uh, UE Shader Script. So this is a plugin that I've used, uh, I've created uh, for Dead by Daylight. Um, so uh, it's just if you need to use this for Dead by Daylight, so characters, so just go to the releases tab on the right here. And what you want to do is you want to click on the zip file and the latest one at the very top. And you want to press start download. Okay. And the final thing we'll need uh, for this is we'll have to, so you'll need to type in smart base uh, Jill. So because in this case, we're using uh, rigid 3D's wonderful model uh, for this tutorial. So just uh, type in smart base Jill into Google, click on the first link and just scroll right down to re3jill.ra and you want to press download on either Europe or the North American servers. So you just want to press download and you'll download the zip file right there. Okay, so now I'll just teach you what you need to do uh, with all these. So from here, what we need to do is we need to install the plugins to Blender. So let me just uh, open Blender by tapping the Windows key, type in Blender, press enter, and you want to go to general. So from here, to install those two plugins that we've just downloaded, you want to go Edit, Preferences, uh, Add-ons, and you want to press Install. So now you want to navigate to wherever you downloaded those two plugins. So I'm just going to install like UE Shader Script uh, v1.2.4.zip. So I'm just going to press Install Add-on. Um, I'm not going to do it because I've installed it already. But what, from there, you want to type in UE space shader. Okay, so you want to uh, make sure that this plugin right here is enabled by making sure this checkbox is on. Now, the second thing you want to do is you want to press install and go back to wherever you downloaded the PSK PSA importer, which is the IO import scene, Unreal PSA PSK 280.py file. And you want to press install add-on. Okay, so from there, you want to type in PSK and make sure that this add-on is enabled. So from there, you're done. So you can just close this Blender file right here. Okay. Um, now, for unzipping that file, 
uh, that uh, the, the RE3 uh, GL file, you may need to download WinRAR, so you'll need to install that because I don't think uh, Windows can uh, unzip them by default. But basically, you just go here, uh, download the version for your system, which would be English 64 bits for me, and then you can just install it from there. Um, okay, so now let's grab that uh, those two files that we needed. So let me just go to my Blender projects and let me just go here. Okay, so basically, let me just close, uh, delete all these. Basically, you should have, uh, so this blend file here will be in the Google Drive below, uh, but if you wanna follow along, but um, if you have any nude model whatsoever, you can just use that instead. But this uh, thing here was made in the tutorial, the previous tutorial on my channel. So if you wanna watch that, you can also watch that from the link in the description below. So we have this raw file that we just downloaded from SmartBase. What we're gonna do is right click and I'm gonna go show, show more app options and extract here. Okay, so from here, yes, we have this RE3 model. So we're gonna have to grab some textures from it. So I'm just gonna close this file here and I'm just going to double click on this RE3 gil.blend file. So I'll teach you how to append files. So what we want to do here is I want to go to uh, material preview mode. So you see this top right here, this uh, second one from the right, you want to make sure that this material preview mode is uh, on. In the meanwhile, I'll explain a couple of things. So these, can you see these folders right here? If I open them up, you can see that each of these folders has a lot of different uh, things inside of them, right? So they have the female armature, they have all these meshes that are attached to the female armature or are children of the female armature. Same with this hair here. So if I open up this folder right here, uh, yes, you can see that there's gel hair and there's some other things inside of it. So basically this is the way to organize things in Blender. And these things are called collections and they have things inside of them. Okay, so when we're importing or appending a file to another file, we wanna to try to use import collections so we don't accidentally just import one thing that might have a dependency on another thing. Turn on the underwear collection. I'm gonna turn off the default outfit. So from here, I'm just gonna make a new layout tab by pressing plus general and go to layout, okay? To make another new layout tab just cause I don't wanna ruin his. And I'm just gonna to go to material preview and you can see that we have this outfit that we wanna kind of append. And where does this outfit come under? It comes under the underwear collection. So that's what we want to import in our other file. So let me just open up our other file right here. So just reviewing some basic navigation in Blender, basically everything revolves around the middle mouse button. So if you want to uh, rotate around, you want to use just the middle mouse button itself. So you can see uh, middle mouse button is rotate. Next, we use the control and middle mouse button to zoom in or out. You can also use the scroll wheel to scroll inwards, to zoom in and scroll outwards, but the control middle mouse button gives you more control. And the final thing that we wanna use is the shift middle mouse button, which is used to pan. Okay, so just a quick review again. Middle mouse button is rotate. Uh, control middle mouse button is zoom in and out. And shift middle mouse button is um, pan around. So with this combination, you can quickly navigate around. Okay, so some other really key concepts that you need to know. Uh, G is used to move. So if I select an object, I have to select the object first, then press G to move it around. Remember, you can also go uh, R, and R means rotate. Okay, so we can rotate our object around. Um, I'm gonna control Z to undo, and I'm gonna go S to scale it up or scale it down, okay? So this is just to move, uh, kind of make it bigger or smaller. Okay, but remember we can also uh, limit our transformations uh, in the specific axes. So if I go GZ, I'm only gonna move it in the Z axis, right? Or if I go GX means move it in the X axis, GY means move it in the Y axis, and GZ means move it in the Z axis. You can also do the same for rotations and scaling. So if I go RX, um, yeah, uh, you can see that it rotates in the X axis, R, oops, RY means rotate it in the Y axis, and RZ means rotate it in the Z axis. And this is very useful because uh, we'll be using this in a couple of seconds. 
And now we can also go S Z, which means that so S X um, S Y means uh, scale it in the Y axis and S Z means scale it in the Z axis. Okay. Now that we've done that, let's actually get to what we need to do. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a quick speed run of how to do this because um, I did this previously and <laughs> the tutorial was hella long and not useful. So we are retaking this. Okay. So number one thing is, first of all, what I'm going to do is I actually created a new folder here. I need to create a new near external outfits and near default hair collection. Now let me show you how to create that. So first of all, I'm just going to delete this. And I'm going to delete this. Okay, so we have this skeleton here. I want to shift select, like hold the shift button and left click and select all these meshes here. So I want to select the NK hair um, and the hair skeleton. Okay, so I've selected this everything here. Press move your mouse into the top right here. Press M and go new collection. And I'm going to call it near external outfits. Okay, so this is just for organization sake and is going to be useful um, if we want to hide anything. And now I'm just going to shift select everything again and press M and make a new collection from inside near external outfits. So, um, oops, <laughs> I'm going to press M again, press new collection. I'm going to go near um, default hair. Okay. And I'm just going to press okay. And now let me just drag this near default hair collection into near external outfits. And you can see that we have um, this collection that we can hide uh, at any time. So it's really useful. Okay, now let's try to add that underwear. So let's try to add the bra and panties. So I'm going to go file, append. Okay, and I'm going to go append the RE3 Joe collection. And remember, what do we want to append? The collection. And we want it to append just the underwear. So I'm just going to append that underwear collection. And you can see that a lot of things have come into this file. Okay, so, yep. Yeah, okay, so now we're done there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, organize these collections. So you can see we have, we have this underwear collection, um, which is fine. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, because I selected um, the near external outfits folder, every, all these collections are imported inside this near external outfits folder. But, 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 let's say that, um, let's say that um, it's imported outside. So let me just put this into the collection outside. So what happens if it imported here, okay? Let me just show you how to organize it. It's really easy. So first things first, I'm just gonna select all these, um, uh, I'm gonna hold the control key and select all these custom bone shapes. Okay, and I'm just going to get all these meshes here. You can see their meshes because they have a small orange triangle facing downwards. Um, so I'm just going to grab all these widgets and they're called widgets. Okay, I grabbed all of them. I'm going to press M to move them into a collection. Near external outfits, new collection. I'm going to call this custom bone shapes and just press OK. Okay, so we've, we kind of have all these. And we don't actually want to delete them, but I do want to hide them by clicking on this exclude from view layer. So they're still there, but we don't want to see them because custom bone shapes uh, give uh, the skeleton uh, their shapes. But I'll show you that in just a second. Another thing, we have this Jill mesh here. So it imported over. So we don't actually need that. So I'm just going to delete that. And we just were left with the bra and the panties. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to shift select this female armature, Jill bra and Jill underwear and press M and move it into the near external outfits folder and make a new bra plus panties collection. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. We have that in beautiful. Um, now what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you what I mean by the custom bone shapes. So let me just delete this underwear collection here because we don't need it and it's empty. And let me just hide the Victoria 8 skeleton for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna hide the Victoria 8 mesh and I'm gonna hide the Victoria 8 skeleton. Okay, so basically we have we imported this skeleton with it, right? We imported this skeleton. So this skeleton is for just the underwear. Now, can you see how it has these cool shapes which kind of look like fingers and stuff? 
Now, what happens if we delete every single one of these custom bone shapes? If I just shift select and I delete them all, have a look. So this just becomes these lame old uh, normal bones. So that's why we don't delete it until we are sure. So I'm just gonna press Control Z. I'm gonna hide this custom bone shapes collection again. And we just want to keep them around just for our visual aid purposes, basically. Um, okay, so now let's unhide the body. Let's un, not that one, sorry. Let's unhide this Victoria 8 body and uh, not the mesh, just the, sorry, not the, not the skeleton. So I've hidden the Victoria 8 skeleton. Make sure the only skeleton that's um, visible is this female armature, which is for the bra and panties. Okay, so how do we attach this clothing? It's pretty simple. Um, we have to, we have to make sure, so we have to make sure that it's kind of in the right place first. Okay, so the first step is making sure that it's the right scale. So this one right here is pretty much already on size because, um, yeah, because it's made for Victoria, no, it's made for Genesis 8 female meshes. But if you needed to scale it up, you could just press S uh, while selecting the skeleton to scale it, and you could just press GZ to move it down, okay? And you can just press S and just GZ to move it in place or G, Y or whatever, whatever you need to do. Uh, in this case, I'm not going to really do anything to it. So I'm just going to leave it as it is per default because it's already pretty much a match. Okay, so now the next step we need to do is we need to attach a shrink wrap modifier to these. So let me just do the bra first. So I'm just gonna click on the bra mesh, go to the blue uh, modifiers uh, tab, and of course, make sure that any subdivision surface modifiers are turned off in the viewport, otherwise you'll find it really slow. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the bra mesh, go to the blue wrench uh, modifiers tab, click on add modifier. From here, we want to add in the um, shrink wrap modifier, which is right here. Okay, and we wanna change this um, shrink wrap modifier so actually we can kind of bring it upwards above the subdivision surface. Actually, no, we can just leave it here. That's okay, we don't need to. Uh, we can change it to snap mode uh, above surface and we can target, we can just target the Victoria 8 mesh, okay? So, so we wanna target this, right? Um, because this is the Victoria 8 mesh, as we can see. But uh, what we want to do is we want to change this to 0.01 .01 meters, okay? You can actually make it uh, 0.001, but the problem is uh, you'll have a hell of a time weight painting. So just try to use 0.01. .01. Now let's try to go to um, solid mode so we can have a better view of this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the vertex groups tab. And I'm going to press plus and I'm going to create a new group called fitting, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go to the modifiers tab again and change this vertex group to fitting. Okay, you'll see that it's like that we haven't even added the shrink wrap modifier. That's because we need to actually uh, vertex paint. We need to paint where the areas where it should be shrink wrapped. So I'm gonna go to weight paint mode. I'm gonna go to the vertex groups tab, make sure fitting is the group that we have currently selected. Now, what we can do is let me turn down, so the weight is one. And let me turn down the strength to like 0.1-ish or 0. Yeah, 0 0.1-ish. And we should be able to just paint rather relaxingly. And you can see that it'll just come just above the skin. You can also use uh, edit mode, well actually not edit mode, uh, sculpt mode is actually better here. But you don't want to paint too much, okay? We just wanna paint the areas that are uh, kind of not, um, are required. You can also use the left bracket to uh, adjust your brush size down. Um, but I think this should in general be okay. Okay, fantastic. Yep, and it's a lot, lot easier if you use 0.01 .01 instead of another. Uh, so it's still gonna work if you change this uh, offset to 0.001, .001, but you're gonna have to paint a lot, lot more and with a much higher strength, which is why I do suggest using 0.001. Okay, so now let me just do this bra strap here very easily. And let me just paint just a tad. 
just make sure this strap and there may be areas where you can't fully get it so don't worry um, but uh, in this case actually it should be actually okay I feel like we can use edit mode or sculpt mode uh, with the inflate brush to um, kind of fix those areas if they do not above, appear above the skin no matter how much we weight paint so do not worry there is a solution um, okay let me just weight paint it okay this is working out rather nicely which is very good okay I just want to straighten out this bra strap a little bit if that's possible okay might and if you need to re-weight paint something, you can. I, I think that weights a little bit much. It's kind of making it behave a little bit weirdly. We can change the weight to zero and we can just paint back again. So we can just paint it back again a little bit. Okay, um, it's not too bad. I can also use, um, I might actually use edit mode for this part. So I'll weight paint it down a little bit just so it isn't as awkward. And yeah, maybe just I'll use a little bit of edit mode here because it's a little bit too much. Okay, cool. Um, yep, okay, so now let's just keep going. I'm gonna hide the uh, sensor cubes. Uh, let me just grab the sensor cubes. Not this one, these two. And now I'm just going to paint with a weight of one and let me just fix these areas along here. Okay, because we know that there should be areas which are there that should be above the mesh. Okay, so very easy. And we'll also be doing the harder outfit, um, which is kind of a nightmare, but we can do it. Um, yes, okay, yes, perfect. Good enough. I'll say it's good enough, um, even though it isn't completely straight, um, but that's okay. Let me fix this side area here. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay. Okay, I'll just keep on painting. I'll just paint to this side. Okay, and you sometimes might need to increase your brush side with the right with the right um, uh, bracket. So if you want to increase the brush size, just click the right bracket. You want to decrease it, uh, left bracket. Okay, and. And you can also adjust your weight if you feel like you're too weak or your strength if you're too weak. I do like using a, a weaker strength and a high weight though so I can just paint over the areas again and again if I need more weight. Okay and I'm just using the mouse to kind of paint around. Yep. Okay. You can also use uh, clothing that is designed for Genesis 8 female bodies from Daz which is kind of easier because um, they will come with all the morphs and everything kind of done. So it's basically no work. So, um, but you will have to purchase them. Um, but you can use this on basically any clothing. Okay, sure. Okay, so that looks okay. I might just weight paint this down a little bit more and I'll just fix it up uh, with um, some... Okay, cool, cool. I'll just fix it up with edit mode. Okay, so now that's done. What I'm also going to do is I'm also going to, so I'm going to make sure that I've turned on display in edit mode and display on cage in edit mode as well for this shrink wrap modifier. Okay, now from here, actually, no, no, actually what I might do is I'm just going to apply this because once, once you're okay with it, actually, let me just paint this part a little bit more. Let me grab a weight of one and let me just paint it around here. Yeah, I'd say that's good enough. Are there any other areas? Maybe a tiny bit here. Yeah, good enough. I'll call this good enough even though there are some jagged edges. You can probably fix that with subdivision surface anyway. Um, so I'm not gonna really, um, not gonna really uh, think about it too much. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna uh, click on this left arrow, this right arrow here. I'm gonna click on apply for this shrink wrap modifier. Uh, yes, it has shape keys. So um, basically the way to uh, make sure that you're doing it correctly with the shape keys Okay, so basically let's go back to object mode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this arrow here. And I'm gonna, cre I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is create a new shape from mix. And I'm gonna double click on this, call it combined. Okay, so this is the way you do it. Um, so what you're gonna do is 
click on this arrow here, and now just click on the move to top. So from here, what we wanna do is we wanna delete this basis shape key. Okay, so we're gonna delete it. And now we're going to delete every other shape key before we delete the combined shape key. So the combined shape key was basically everything, every one of the other shape keys together. Um, you don't need to, well actually you should apply the um, shape key modifier. Okay, so you should, you should see that it, it does look the same shape. Because if you didn't do that process, um, the some of the shape keys might not be applied properly. Okay, so now what we can do is we can just um, apply this shrink wrap modifier and that's done. Okay, so now we're just gonna solve this issue here with the slight uh, things there. So we're just gonna do it in edit mode. I'm gonna use proportional editing. So what I did is, let me just go to um, this vertex groups tab let me add a basic basis shape key, add one more shape key. I'm gonna call this strap fix, okay? Make sure this is set to one, this strap fix shape key, and make sure you've selected the strap fix shape key. This is how we're gonna do it non-destructively. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select some vertices around this area. You can use the um, select lasso, so just press www until you see the lasso tool here, and you can just uh, select around here. Okay, so once you have done that, make sure you turn on proportional editing. So proportional editing is this top thing here. Just turn it on, make sure it's blue, and you can just press G, okay. So you might not see that, that circle up. So you might need to scroll inwards to decrease your uh, circle until you can actually see it. I'm gonna press Control Z because I didn't want to move that. But you can now uh, change your circle of influence or your sphere of influence. Um, but anyway, uh, proportional editing just makes things look a little bit more natural um, because you're moving a, the vertex itself and uh, its neighboring vertices. Okay, yeah, so I think that's probably good enough. You can also use the grab, uh, the grab brush here in sculpt mode to do the same thing. Okay, so let me just grab this here, these vertices there, and yes, we'll do that. Okay, yeah, so that's basically done. But if you had it at zero, you'll see that nothing happens. So you need to make sure that shape key is on one. Uh, you can also apply it, like if you wanted to make this permanent, you can delete the basis shape key and then delete the strap fix. But um, if you wanted it to be non-destructive, just keep that strap fix there. Okay, so that's perfect. Now this one's done, let's get to the panties. So let's do this. Let's uh, grab the, let's go to the um, uh, modifiers. Let's add a modifier. Let's add the shrink wrap modifier. I'm gonna turn this to above surface and I'm gonna change the target to Victoria 8 mesh. Okay, I'm gonna change the offset to 0 0.01 meters and I'm going to go to the vertex groups tab, create a new vertex group, call it fitting and we're going to actually get it on the road. Yeah, so I'm gonna change it to fitting right here. Also full credits to Farah Best Girl for this tutorial on Smart Base. Um, but I did want to just show the process a little bit more comprehensively. Uh, okay, so now let's go to the fitting group. Make sure that the fitting vertex group is selected. Change from object mode to weight paint mode. Let's start painting. So just make sure you can kind of lower the strength. You don't actually need it that high, like 0 0.7, 0 0.76 is probably okay. Okay, actually probably a little bit higher. Uh, let's change it to 0 0.1-ish. Yeah, 0 0.101, that's good enough. Okay, and we're just going to paint around and just have it just above the mesh, okay? So that's the most desirable result. Beautiful, okay. Okay. I will also teach you how to uh, make this for animation as well because we need this working for animation. Um, however, uh, yeah, it should be okay. Let's see, let's see. Uh, this is kind of different to the, well, this one this one will work. I know this underpants will work. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just keep painting and let's just paint around this area. Just make this a little more smooth around that area. Let me just control Z that. Just maybe a tiny bit, just like that. Yeah, good enough. I'd say that's good enough. Okay, also here. As I said, you can also use the, um, you can also use the 
the sculpt sculpt mode there's like not really much of a difference if you use the sculpt mode inflate brush um, just to rise it above above the mesh a little bit um, but a uh, shrink wrap does is kind of slightly better because uh, it does kind of conform to the mesh a little bit better um, but it does have limitations like it can't make it uh, <laughs> jump up really really far either but that's okay okay cool that's perfect let's actually just apply that shrink wrap modifier so i'm just going to go back to object mode i'm going to try to apply it but i won't be able to apply it because shape keys right but i'll try to apply it anyway and i'll show you why it doesn't work so i just i'll just go apply it says modifier cannot be applied to a mesh with shape keys so let's click on this arrow here under the shape keys vertex group tab and go um go um, new shape from mix and call this combined because this is the result of all the shape keys we had. Now let me change this combined to one and what I'm going to do is click on this arrow again make sure combined is selected and move to top. What I'm going to do now is delete the basis shape key so that the combined is now the basis shape key and I'm going to go from the bottom and delete all these other shape keys. So I can just delete all these by just pressing this minus icon and yes we are done cool so it's still the same same shape now what we can do is we can transfer weights here so in fact we don't even really need this uh, female armature skeleton anymore so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to delete it well actually uh, if i delete it okay so one second so if you move if you ended up moving this so let me just um turn on the sensor cubes again and if you ended up moving this or you scaled it up at all what happens when you'll delete it is this. You'll see that this happens. So it just it just snaps back. So let me just press Control Z. So if you did happen to move it at all, what you need to do is what you need to do is you need to go uh, click on this skeleton first, and you need to go Control A and all transforms. Okay, and then what you should do is click on these me this mesh here. Go to the modifiers tab. Apply this. Uh, um, yeah, so apply this uh, modifier here, so this armature modifier. Just click on apply, and same with the panties, right? Uh, click on that, click on apply. Also, yeah, I forgot to apply the shrink wrap, but yeah, you need to apply that as well. Um, but yes, um, actually, let me just change the shrink wrap to the top one, and then let me just apply it there first. But it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's all done. That's perfect. Okay, so now. Uh, what you what you should be see is when you delete this, like this will not move. None of the meshes will move. But we didn't transform it at all, so that's why it shouldn't move at all anyway. So what we're going to do now is select the uh, Victoria Eight mesh. Select on the bra. Go to um, go to weight paint mode. And what we're going to do is go to weights, and we're going to go transfer weights. Okay. So from here, what we want to do is we want to change this source layers selection from active layer to by name and and it'll automatically go to all layers but make sure all layers is clicked anyway okay so that's perfect um, let's also do the same with the second one here so we'll click on this um, body mesh first shift hold the shift key select the panties go to weight paint mode weights transfer weights and go by make sure by name is selected and all layers okay um, you can also mess with this. So another setting that some people like to use is nearest face interpolated, and they like to change the ray radius to five. However, um, it just kind of depends. Like I'm pretty sure the like the normal one like should work. So if you just go the default settings, which is nearest vertex, um, it should work with ray radius zero. It should work just fine either way. Okay, so that's perfect. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna parent these. Uh, this dual bra and dual underwear meshes to the uh, skeleton. So let me unhide the Victoria 8 skeleton. In fact, let me just delete uh, this custom bone shapes thing because we don't need it because it was just for the armature. So let me just shift select all these uh, things and now I can delete this custom bones shape collection. Okay, so now what I can do is I can unhide the Victoria 8 skeleton and I can just select the panties, select the bra mesh, and finally hold the shift key, select the skeleton. Press Control P and just go armature deform. 
Okay, so that will create the armature modifiers. So if you go into the modifier tab, you'll see there's an armature modifier here. In fact, let's bring that to the top and let's click on the panties mesh and bring that to the top because armature is generally first. Um, it doesn't really matter that much, but generally you should put the armature first. Okay, so now let's just test out a few things. So let's press uh, G and yes, both the panties and the bra move with the skeleton in object mode. Now let's go to pose mode and we gotta test this out. So I'm gonna test uh, this out by just pressing G and yes, it does kind of deform with it. There are a, a little bit there, um, but I guess it's kind of inevitable there <laughs> um, if you bend backwards like that. But let's just check this. Actually, well, wow, that's actually not the greatest, honestly. That's kind of mediocre. But let me just check that. Um, okay, at least the panties work fine. Um, so if it isn't working well, you might want to try the transfer weights thing. I'm not sure it's gonna help out in this case. So I'm gonna select the body first, shift select the um, bra, and I'm gonna to go to, uh, I'm going to go to weight paint mode. I'm gonna go weights, transfer weights, and I'm just gonna make sure this goes from nearest vertex to nearest face interpolated. I'm gonna change the uh, ray radius to five. And I'm also gonna make sure it's by name and all layers for destination. And that should work. Let me just check that out. Let's just see if that works any better. I'm not sure it will, honestly, but we'll give it a try. So when I press R, eh, nah, not really. <laughs> it's not really much better. Um, what you could do is, one thing you can do is you can continue to have that shrink wrap modifier on there. So especially for flat objects, um, we can just click on this and we can just add that shrink wrap modifier. In fact, let me just, so I added that shrink wrap modifier and let me go to pose mode. And if you are using this for animation, RX, let me just go to the fur furthest point. Honestly, you're never really gonna do this, but um, that's okay, yeah, that's okay. Um, honestly, you're not really ever gonna do that. <laughs> but um, I guess if you have something like this, what you can do, you can, put it to the furthest point and let me just go to object mode and I'm going to click on this uh, shrink wrap and let me just change it to above surface, target uh, the Victoria 8 mesh again and just 0 0.01 uh, offset vertex group. I'm going to make a new one. I'm gonna make the fitting group again or you can call it fitting two if, if you already had one um, but now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this, uh, change it to fitting two. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weight paint those areas. And you can just keep this um, shrink wrap modifier on, I guess, if you'd like for animation, if you really wanted this to really conform in every situation. Um, but in general, you don't really need to. Like, um, I don't know, I guess, it can help it out in certain circumstances. Okay, cool. Um, I think that should technically be okay. Just doing a little bit of weight painting and just keeping this shrink wrap modifier on it so it will continually shrink wrap to it. So that might be slightly better when you're in animation. So let me just show you that pose mode. Yeah, okay, it's a lot better. I, I would say like you're never gonna get like 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 that much if you do that, like um, <laughs> you're kind of crazy. Um, you're not like you don't really usually move that much. I would say like it's good enough for most positions. Although that is kind of annoying me that strap there. You could just paint wait paint that area if you wanted it more. Anyway, so we're gonna assume that this is kind of okay because um, yeah, uh, this is just a tutorial and um. Let me just, why is that not, work, not, not working? Okay, fine. So I just went, I selected all the bones with A, pressed Alt G, Alt R, Alt S to reset the position transforms, reset the rotation transforms, and reset the scale transforms. Now I just go back to object mode here. Now let's add this second outfit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, hide this bra plus panties outfit, and we're going to go to the second outfit. So how do we get the second outfit? Good question. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to use U model. 
So remember where you extracted U model. Um, so you right click extract here and you should have U model 64.exe. Okay, from here, what you wanna do is you wanna open Steam. So I'm going to open Steam and we're gonna do the second outfit. So this is if uh, you are following along with me um, and you wanted to get an outfit from uh, Dead by Daylight or a game pretty much, any, um, any, uh, any Unreal Engine kind of game. So, but specifically U model in this case. So what I'm gonna do is what I did is I clicked on that uh, game, Dead by Daylight, uh, manage, browse local files. Now I'm in this folder, I click in the address bar here to highlight it, I press Control C to copy it, and what I do is I'm just going to U model again, and I put that as my path to the game files. I go override game detection, and I go Unreal Engine 4, 4.25 for Dead by Daylight. Cool, so we know that um, the characters for Dead by Daylight are located around game characters. So I opened up this characters folder, and you can see campers and slashes. So we're looking for Nia, uh, the Nia Cyberpunk outfit. Um, so we're going to go into the campers folder because campers are where the survivors are, killers are where the slashes are. Wait, sorry, slashes are where the killers are. Campers, and we're going to go to the Nia folder um, because Nia is Nia uh, in the <laughs> code names. Now, we're gonna go into the models and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click open folder content. Okay, so this will open this thing here. So you, you can now use the page down and page up commands to move to the next model. So page down is next model, page up is previous model. We're gonna uh, turn on navigate, include meshes because we don't want to see the materials. So I'm just gonna press page down now and you can see that I'm going to the next meshes. So what I want is I want this, uh, this these glasses. So I wanna press control T to uh, tag this for export. So it's gonna keep it on the screen even when I press page down. Okay, cool. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna to go to the, um, yes, I'm gonna to wanna to grab this skirt, and I also wanna grab uh, page down, so I'm just going page down, page down, page down, page down, page down, page down, and I wanna grab this one here. So I'm just gonna press Control T as well to tag this final one for export. Now you can go Tools, Export Current Object, and you want to select the folder you want to export to. So I'm going to, go to the um, NSFW projects, uh, near clothing tutorial, and I'm just gonna put it into this folder here. I'm gonna press okay. Oh, wait, okay, so wait, when I did that, just make sure you're on TGA as well because you can do it with PNG, but TGA is better quality textures. Okay, so now we're going to go back into Blender. I'm gonna press, uh, so make sure you've installed the U model and a PSK importer. So go to the PSK, folder and you want to make sure you're on the setting of all and make sure reorient bones is checked it's enabled okay so go import psk and we're going to start importing the models so you want to go to where you imported where you exported uh the uh the character from u model so i'm just going to go back to nsfw projects and i'm going to go to near clothing tutorial and i'm going to go to uh, game, characters, campers, and I'm gonna go into the Nia folder. I'm gonna go into models. I'm gonna, yes, so I'm just gonna press the plus icon here because that's gonna just favorite and bookmark that folder when we need to come back for it later. Uh, if we need to come back for it later, that is. So I'm gonna go heads, accessories, top, models, NK hair. I'm also gonna hide um, the, the, uh, near default hair by hiding the collection. Okay, yeah, so we now have this one inside here, which is great. Let's also grab the rest. So let me grab the um, legs. So I grab the legs as well, and I grab the torsos as well. Okay, so we have everything in here. What you wanna do is you wanna press A to select everything, and you wanna shift select a mesh. Okay, so you're, can you see how there's a yellow outline on the last selected thing? So if you press shift and you make sure the last selected thing you've selected is a mesh and you right click, you should have this option to shade smooth. Otherwise you can click on the individual meshes, right click shade smooth instead, but it's faster if you just press A to select everything, shift select a mesh, right click shade smooth. Okay, so you can see that everything is no longer polygonal, but you'll see that we don't have our, okay. Yes, we do have our materials, 
because uh, this is one, one of my previous files. Um, however, um, let's just say that you don't have the previous, the, <laughs> the previous materials. Um, let me hide uh, Victoria 8, the Victoria 8 collection. Uh, where is the Victoria 8 collection? Yes, I'm just gonna hide the Victoria 8 meshes and I'm gonna hide the Victoria 8 skeleton as well. So let's just say that you didn't have this because normally it should be white as well. Um, but anyway, so I changed to material preview mode here. Uh, this is material preview mode. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one here. I'm gonna to go to load UE shaders. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the exported game folder. So what I'm going to do is I have to navigate to wherever I exported, um, I exported the uh, things from U model, the models from U model, and that's just going to be under NSFW projects. Where is it? What? I don't know where I put it. Ah, uh, here it is. NSFW projects near clothing tutorial, and I'm going to go inside the game folder. Okay, so don't go any deeper. Make sure you just stay in the game folder. Press accept and make sure that uh, you're just in the game folder and you don't have anything after this, okay? Okay, cool. So from here, we're gonna make sure to select a preset. So normally we wanna select the DVD Pit Princess clothing preset because this is uh, all clothing and we don't actually want the skin, so we're just gonna ignore the skins there. So I'm just gonna select the mesh that I need to select and press add shader map to all selected meshes. Okay, so uh, it doesn't do anything here because there wasn't anything there. Um, but if you select this second thing here and you press add shader map to all selected meshes, you can see that it adds the materials. Perfect. Okay, so now we have to do uh, the same thing here. But what we're gonna do is I'm gonna change this to DVD Pit Princess generic. Um, actually, before I do that, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna add DVD Pit Princess generic. Uh, click on DVD Pit Princess Generic and press Add Shader Map to all selected meshes. Okay, but this isn't actually technically correct because on the hair material, right now we're using the generic preset when we actually have a hair preset here. So uh, we have to add the hair preset to the hair material, which is M-I-N-K Hair 008. So how do we do that? Let me just explain with Epic Pen. So I'm just gonna open up Epic Pen and put it on the right side of the screen, cool. Okay, so pretty much we have three materials here, right? So we have three material slots. So this material slot in my plugin is material slot zero. Now this next material slot here, which is M-I-N-K uh, accessory glasses L-O-8 is material slot one, okay? Because when you're counting down, you count down this way, okay? So it increases this way. Now. The final uh, material here is M-I-N-K hair 008, and that is two, okay? So zero, one, two, okay? You count from the top to the bottom, and the first material slot is always material slot zero, because uh, I don't know why I decided that. <laughs> it was kind of silly on me um, on re retrospect, but you know, it's already there, and I don't want to change it anymore. So now, if we wanted to target just the hair material, you can kind of guess from the little shader ball on the uh, left that this is just the hair material. So we want to target just two because we want to target the yellow one. Uh, if we wanted to target both the red and yellow ones, we can go one space two. Okay, but obviously we just want to uh, uh, target number two. So we're just going to make sure indexes of material presets, uh, this one here, is two. Now this box here only adds, like adds, it's like a surgical one. So it won't add it to everything. Now I'll press uh, Add, so I'll make sure I am on DVD Pit Princess here, that preset, then press add shader maps to all multiple, uh, to multiple meshes, materials. And there, we should see, we go to the shading tab and we just go through these materials. Now let me just uh, erase everything here. If we go through these materials now, we should see that M-I-N-K glasses has DVD generic, same as this one has DVD generic, but this one has the DVD hair preset, which is kind of fantastic, because that's what we want. Okay, fantastic, we're good. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to unhide the Victoria 8 skeleton. Uh, actually, no, we don't need the skeleton, we just need the um, Victoria 8 meshes. Okay, so we have the Victoria 8 meshes here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of place everything in the rough spot. 
we're probably gonna have to scale this up. So let me just scale up the clothing. So the first step is click on the skeleton, not the mesh, the skeleton. Okay, so in fact, let me just hide the hair. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open up all of these and make sure you've opened all of them. If you don't open all of them, you won't be able to select all of them. So I'm holding the shift key and I selected all of these by just going shift left click. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move them into near external outfits. I'm gonna make a new collection. I'm gonna call this cyberpunk outfits, outfit. Okay, cool. So we have this kind of thing here. I'm going to hide this hair. I'm gonna hide the hair skeleton and the hair mesh, same as the um, torso skeleton, no, not the torso skeleton, just the legs and the legs mesh. We're gonna do these one at a time. Okay, so first things first is I'm going to scale this up. Okay, I'm gonna press S and yes, that seems roughly right. I'm gonna scale it up and then I can press G, Z to remove it in the Z axis, right? And now I can press G, Y to move it backwards maybe. Um, okay, G, Y. I think that might be okay. Okay, G, Y. Might scale it up a tiny bit more just so that kind of looks correct. Okay, I might actually also turn on the bra just for censorship purposes and turn that off. Okay. Okay, and now I'm just going to hide these two cubes here. Um, yes. Okay, cool. So we've kind of posed it, but I want to delete the skin here. So how can I do that? I can just press tab and wait, actually I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> so let me just click on the correct clothing here and press tab to enter edit mode. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Alt A to deselect everything. Now, what I can do here is I can actually select by material. So I'm gonna go into the material menu here, this red material ball, and I'm going to select the material that looks like skin, which is M-I-N-K torso, and I'm gonna press select. Okay, so you can see that it actually selects everything really, really nicely. So I can press delete and vertices and everything related to the skin is gone. Okay, so that's how one way to do it. Otherwise, if you couldn't do that, what you can do is you can select a vertice and make sure you move your cursor over to an air, part of the area that you wanna select and press L, right? So L selects the linked area, but you have to move your cursor. Like don't, you can, you can just not move it at all. Um, and you'll select a linked area. Um, you can also continue to move your cursor around and press L to target a different area, press L, and you can continue, continue doing that. But obviously in this case, it's easier just to select everything with that and just press delete vertices. Okay, cool. Now that's done, what we're gonna do is we're going to start to pose this correctly. Okay, so we're just gonna move it into the right place first. Just make sure it's roughly in the right place. Yeah, mm, GY. I might scale this up just a tad more actually. G, Y. Okay, good enough, yeah. I'll say this is good enough. And we're gonna start to pose this. Okay, so let me click on the skeleton, go to pose mode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to move out this, I wanna click on this shoulder roll bone. It's useless because I just press G and to move that bone and nothing happens. So obviously you, we don't actually need to use that bone because it's unused for DVD. So I'm gonna go R, Y. So R, Y means rotate in the Y axis. RZ means rotate in the Z axis. And you can see that it's starting to come closer because we really want this to be posed as close as possible before we start doing any shrink wrapping. So RZ, okay, that's good enough. Uh, I'll just look at a side view, yeah, RZ. So we wanna pose it as close as possible. Don't worry if you can't get it like one-to-one, -one. that's not important, but, okay, this is another <laughs> twist bone, but, if you can pose it better, like just try to pose it better. Okay. Yeah, good enough. I also will, if I, if I just go back to object mode, let me separate these gloves. So I'm just gonna go press tab and I'm just going to select this glove here, a vertex on the glove and press L to select the linked area. Now I'm gonna press P and press selection, okay? So I'm gonna separate that glove and in fact, I'm just going to hide that glove right here by clicking on this eye icon. 
Same with this other glove here because I know it's not gonna pose well along with the other thing. So I'm gonna press P and press selection. So we can kind of pose that later. Okay, that's perfect. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna go back to object mode and I'm gonna to try to pose the other arms. Click on the skeleton and go to pose mode. Fantastic. Let me move this roll bone out of the way and just go R, Z. Wait, let me just go to press numpad three to get a side view, R, Z. Yeah, that's okay. R, Y, just to kind of move it upwards. Yeah, that's good. Um, wow, that's actually really, really good. And don't worry there, <laughs> we will fix those. Those are actually just broken vertices. It's not really a problem. It's a problem with a mesh actually. <laughs> I don't know why those are broken in this outfit, but they are. Um, so we do need to patch them in a bit. Um, yeah, this is close enough, honestly. Uh, let me just try to move this one. Yeah, that's the wrong one. Let me move it out of the way with G and R, Z. Okay, so R, Z to rotate in the Z axis just to match that arm a little better. Let me make sure that this arm's kind of matched. Yeah, that's kind of posed good enough. And there's these kind of things on the back, but don't worry, that is fine. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, um, I'm going to apply these transforms before I start. Well, actually, no, it doesn't really matter. We won't apply the transforms. Let me just go to do the shrink wrap now. So I'm gonna select on this mesh here I'm gonna select the uh, jacket mesh and I'm just going to go to the modifiers tab, add a modifier, and I wanna add the shrink wrap modifier. Okay, um, yep, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change snap mode to above surface. I'm gonna change the target again to the Victoria 8 mesh. I'm gonna change the offset to 0 0.01. And yes, okay, <laughs> you'll see that it looks really, really bad. That's okay. What we're gonna do is just make sure that we shrink wrap to the correct areas, just the areas we need to shrink wrap. So I'm gonna go to the vertex group tab, the green vertex group, and just press the plus icon, make a new vertex group called fitting. Cool. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to the modifiers tab and just change this vertex group to fitting. Okay, now what we're gonna do is go to white paint mode and start just painting these areas which are kind of poking out. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to, just, yeah, yeah, okay, cool. I'm just going to do these areas here. I'm just gonna do this area here. Just make sure it's on 0 0.1 and not 0 0.001 because you're gonna have a lot of a harder, like it's gonna be a lot harder to paint if you have 0 0.01. Don't worry about that. That's actually a broken vertex there, so you don't need to worry. Same with there, that's a broken vertex. We'll patch that in a couple of seconds. Don't know why. Um, I think it might've been part of the actual skin material actually. But anyway, um, that's okay. We can actually just patch it real easy. So let me just paint around these areas. You might need to paint around the little holes. So if you just draw a little circle around it or you make your brush a little bit bigger, uh, that might help out a little bit. Okay, cool, that's done. And we just wanna paint a little bit. Um, yep, cool, that's fine. Fine, that's fine. Like this jacket and this skirt will be the worst part, honestly, because they just have different topology and that means that it's harder for it to keep its form, like, like keep from clipping. So I will teach you a trick just to use the mask modifier to kind of eliminate the clipping by just deleting the skin underneath. Well, it's not deleting, it's just hiding it uh, with the mask modifier. Uh, get me out of there. I'm using shift tilde and dub D. So if you go shift tilde, basically you go into fly mode and you can use the WASD keys to move around. So W A W A wait W A S D. And what you can do is you can also scroll in with your mouse wheel to go faster and you can scroll down with your mouse wheel up. Uh, scroll backwards with your mouse wheel to go slower. And you can just left click at any time to exit, which is kind of convenient. Okay, um, that's good. Was there anything else? Okay, that's just dust on the screen, Never mind. I thought that there was actually areas that um, needed to be white painted. Okay, cool. And let me just do this area on the back. Okay, okay. We're just slowly doing this thing right here. Okay, okay.
and we'll have to use proportional editing on the skirt uh, and actually some sculpt mode. So proportional editing helps keep the form of the thing if you use a large enough um, sphere of influence. Okay, so we will have to use it. Otherwise, if we use just sculpt mode, um, well, we won't be able to use just shrink wrap, first of all. And if we just use sculpt mode, um, it will ruin the shape. But anyway, let's just keep painting. Just make sure that all this is kind of painted in. Cool, cool, cool. Might just hide the bra in a couple of secs um, just because it's kind of getting in the way a little bit, but that's okay. You could, uh, I guess, shrink wrap this on top of the bra as well. Or, or you could um, kind of not shrink wrap it on top of the bra. You could just use sculpt mode to put it on top of the bra if you wanted the bra and the jacket to be on the same time. Uh, let me just hide the bra mesh. Yeah, I'm gonna hide the bra mesh. Uh, Where's the bra mesh? Here you are. And I'm just, yeah, so I'm just gonna paint. Come on, wait, wait, what, what is going on? Okay. Let me just paint around this area. So you might need to paint around the sides a little bit. Might be a little bit hard to paint, especially these areas here, but I'm sure we can do it. Yep, so you may need to paint around like the sides of it. So because sometimes the vertexes are really weird, they need you to paint like to the left and right of it, like just around it kind of, not exactly on the spot. Okay, so you might need to just kind of draw a circle around it, draw mini circles around it, or increase your brush size or increase your strength. Okay, so let me just do that side, this side up correctly. So I can just, um, just paint around here and just paint that. Come on, come on. Do, 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 do. Paint around and let me just, oh my God, paint some circles around this. If it starts becoming annoying, you might want to increase your strength, the strength of your brush um, or the radius of it. Oh, come on. Come on. Let me just paint around this, circles around this slowly. It's getting closer. So I'm getting hopeful. Come on. Okay. Oh, come on. Uh, yeah, you can also use edit mode as we demonstrated before, um, but yeah, and also subdivision surface on the clothing uh, mesh and the skin will kind of help solve it a little bit, um, but uh, I don't like relying on subdivision surface because uh, it kind of eats away at your viewport and your render performance and it makes it a lot longer to render, but yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, fine, we finally got it. Oh, wait, ah. <laughs> just as I say, we finally got it all. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, we fixed it, okay, cool. Now, let's actually uh, just apply that subdivisions, let's, let's apply that modifier there. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to click on here and we're gonna, like, we're gonna click on apply. So I'm just going to click on apply here and that, wait, Wait, sorry, one second, <laughs> sorry. I need to apply this one first, but so I need to click on the uh, torso skeleton itself, press on control A and click on all transforms. Now the second thing I need to do is I need to go to the, click on the uh, jacket mesh again, click on modifier tab, uh, apply this armature uh, modifier and then apply this shrink wrap modifier and you'll see nothing changes. Fantastic. Now let us go fix that those broken, uh, uh, those broken triangles. So click on the jacket mesh and go to edit mode. Okay, so we're just gonna make mini triangles here. So this was a result of deleting that other thing. So I'm just made, clicked on all three of those vertexes there. I pressed F to kind of create a face in between it. Um, we can fix that UV real quick, but I will also fix this one here because you can see there's a hole here. I'm gonna press F. Okay, we have a thing there. Okay, so let's actually just fix those two faces by UV, uh, un UV mapping them correctly. So I'm gonna select this, and whenever you UV unwrap just, uh, and you have uh, broken uh, faces, you should select some vertices near it. So it gives you a good idea of what 
you should be uh, doing. So now go to the UV editing tab. And basically, you should see that this one right here is using that. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm actually going to say that this one here, hey, oops, let me just turn off proportional editing. Um, God, there's another one under this, isn't there? Because you can see how stretched it is. Um, actually, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. Well, I see where it's supposed to go. So this one here, this one vertice here. Oh my God. I might actually, I might actually, uh, so I changed to, uh, to this select mode here, this face select. Also, if you don't see that it has, it's in solid mode here, you need to change it to material preview mode here. But anyway, I'm just going to select the broken one again, just by itself, so I don't edit anything else. And now I'm just going to uh, press, select that and press G to move it. Okay, I'm just going to make this screen a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to zoom in a little bit to there. Okay, and I'm just going to align it to the side here, I think. Yep, okay, so let's have a look at that now. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, now let's do the other one over here. I do notice there's this shirt here. You can delete some of these vertexes, vertices if you want. Um, why not? I'll delete them just cause. Yep, okay, I've deleted them. Oh, that is some cleavage. Um, yes, but anyway, <laughs> let us uh, also patch this one here. I don't actually know what it, which one it was, honestly. I think it was this one here. I'll assume it was. Um, it actually doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I can't keep track of it. So I'm gonna assume it's okay. If I can't find which one it was, then I'll go back <laughs> to a layout tab. And let us just go and go to tab, press tab to enter edit mode, make sure face select mode is active. And let's actually just do these two faces here. Oh wait, oh wait, sorry. Let's go to vertex select mode and select these three here. Press, wait, is that the? Yes, okay, that's the right one. Okay, <laughs> press F, select these three here. Press F and select these three here and press F. Okay, we have those done. Now let's go to face select mode. Let's go select these three. In fact, let's select the middle ones there as well. I'm gonna to go to the UV editing tab. And okay, so we can start to see what's going on. Basically everything got real stretched. Um, wait, let me just change from uh, this select lasso to the, the tweak, the tweak one. So we can select individual ones. Okay. That is a little bit annoying that it kind of selects the other one. I'm thinking, well, what is this actually? Okay, so there's two points here. This is a tiny bit confusing. Okay, let me just select the problem ones then. I'll just select the problem ones instead of selecting everything because that is slightly throwing me off. Uh, let me just select these three. Okay, uh, yep, we've selected these three. You can see they're very stretched. So let me just uh, fix that real quick. Okay, so this one here, let me select that point. I'm gonna bring it back to roughly here. That looks correct. Let me select this point, this one, this face here. You can see it's stretched beyond any reasonable measure. So we should kind of just bring it back over here-ish. Make sure it fits within that non-line seam. Okay, yep. And there's another problem with this. This is on the MINK Torso O material. So you wanna make sure it's assigned to the correct material. So you just select this vertex here and press, click on this material here, press assign. Okay, so you can see now it's fixed it. And this one here is actually just completely out of the way as well. So I will drag it back to right, oops. I will just press G and just drag it back to here. Okay, and yes, it's perfect. You can see we have now patched that jacket Fantastic. Okay, so now that is done, we're going to start to do the other part of that, which is that skirt there. So let me just uh, show the legs. Okay, so actually, so I have applied it, but let me just press on Control A 
and all transforms to apply it again and make sure that I've applied the armature modifier. Cool. Now I can, I won't delete the uh, torso mesh, uh, torso thing right yet uh, because yeah, but I, I won't need it because I need to use it for the gloves. But let me just press, click on this mesh here, this uh, jacket mesh, press Alt P, clear parent. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to, yeah, I'm gonna let it be for now because I'm, I'm going to add, um, I'm gonna transfer weights in a second. Let me just hide the torso skeleton. Okay, so now we need to get onto this skirt. So let's find the legs mesh here and let's find the legs skeleton. Okay, so we found the leg skeleton here. What I'm going to do is I'm just gonna scale it up. Okay, so I'm just gonna press S to scale this up until it's kind of reasonable, GZ. Is that a little bit too large? Feels like it's a little bit too large actually. Um, GZ. GZ, GY. Okay, we can do some further scaling when we just get the skirt itself. GZ. Okay, that's too small. Um, I'm gonna press Control Z. You know what? I think this kind of feels correct. Yeah, this around this position. Uh, GY actually. No, I think that I think actually this kind of works out kind of well. I think we might just um, weight paint that. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is we need to take out the skin, right? So what we're going to do is go to the vertex select mode. Let's go to select by material is the first thing you should have a look at. So let's select this. Okay, so this is the skirt itself. Okay, and this is the legs. Okay, so we don't have a way to select just the skin. So let's just try selecting the skin here. And let's mouse over, hover over another skin vertex and press L to select the linked area. And you can see we've selected both legs. So that's not good either. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to do this manually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select this skirt here because I'm gonna use wireframe mode. Um, let me just hide the Victoria 8 mesh for one second. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, so I select this uh, skirt and press H. Okay, very important, remember to press Alt-H to unhide it. So you need to remember to unhide it. But what I'm gonna do here is press numpad one to go to front view and go to wireframe mode. From here, because I'm on the lasso select tool, select lasso, which is this tool here. Let me just click there, back here, and let me go to, where was it, here? Let me just go to material preview. Okay, that was too much. Okay, so it was just, let me hold the control key to deselect, so if I just, do that. Okay, so now I've selected the correct amount and I can just press delete vertices. Okay, so now you can see we just have the stockings left. So we've deleted all the skin and I can press Alt H. Okay, remember to do Alt H, otherwise you will run into problems. Okay, so let me just go, let me save this file as well. You need tutorial clothing, tutorial um, uh, four. Okay, now let's just um, do, let's separate the stocking. Okay, so what you wanna do is you wanna select a vertex on the stocking and just press L to select linked area. We also wanna select the boot as well. So just press L on the boot, but when you hover over the boot and press L, now press P and separate by selection. So I've separated one boot, let's do the same to the other. By clicking on a vertex there, um, select, um, press L to select linked area and hover your mouse over the boot vertex and press L again to select that, press P and separate by selection. Okay, so now we kind of just have the two legs. So I can hide those two. I can call this left leg stocking and left, wait, is that left? No, that's right leg stocking because actually I have it right leg stocking and this one here is left leg stocking. Okay, so I just double clicked on it to rename it and we can see that we have those two. Okay, so now we kind of have that perfectly. So let me unhide the Victoria 8 mesh uh, which is right here. Okay, cool. So now we can kind of work on getting it working. So let us just, um, so what we're gonna do here is we're just going to use uh, proportional editing with edit mode here. So I'm just gonna go to the vertex groups tab and I'm going to add a shape key. 
the basis shape key, and you need to add one more because this one is, the basis shape key is the basic one that we change, make changes to basically. So I'm gonna double click on this key here. I'm gonna call it expand. Expand, good, yep, yeah. okay. And then I'm gonna make sure that this is not on zero, but it's on one. Let me just leave it on zero and I'll just show you what happens. So if I go to, if I click on this skirt mesh and I go make sure I am on the expand skirt uh, shape key and just press tab to enter edit mode. Okay, so now just make sure you're on the select lasso tool and we're just going to enter wireframe mode, actually not wireframe mode. We're just going to kind of select around here. Okay, yep, and I'm just gonna hold control just to deselect some of these areas. And I think that might be the general area and make sure, so if I don't, if I just move this out, you can see that's very jagged, right? So if I press control Z and I turn on the um, proportional editing and I just press G and I can just expand my thing by scrolling backwards. This one looks like it's, it looks a lot more natural and doesn't deform the mesh, like it deforms like the whole mesh at once, which is a good thing. Um, okay, let me just control Z. Um, maybe we don't need this as part of the selection, but I'm just holding control and just deselected that. Okay, good enough, yeah. Okay, that should be good enough there. And let's just do the same to the other one. So you don't actually need to make sure that the whole thing is perfect because we can, we're gonna go back in there with, um, with um, shrink wrap modifier anyway. So I'm gonna go G, I'm just going to move it backwards. Cool. Um, yeah, so I just moved that backwards and that's perfect. Now I'm just gonna go back to object mode and you'll see what, what happens. So it seems like nothing's happened because this number on the shape key is zero. So we need to adjust that to one. Okay, so this is a way to work non-destructively. For example, let's say that I didn't like this shape key anymore. I can just press minus and that shape key will be gone forever. But let's press control Z because we actually do want that. Okay, this is okay. You can see that it's, it's rather thick right now, but that's okay because we will shrink wrap it um, in a second. But let's just shrink wrap these additional areas. Uh, in fact, I can use sculpt mode there. You know what, I'll just, on this shape key, the expand shape key, I'm gonna to go to sculpt mode and I'll show you how to use sculpt mode instead. So you can use the shrink wrap modifier as we've used uh, just before, but I'm just gonna to go to the inflate Wait, uh, expand, yes, inflate, inflate uh, thing here. Make sure you're on plus. You can change your strength down to like 0 0.96. And we can just, actually, let me turn it up again, 0.4-ish. And let's just move our mouse around. So you can see it kind of works in a similar way to the shrink wrap, but you don't actually need to go through all those steps. Um, it doesn't shrink wrap exactly to the mesh though. So that is one thing to be worried about. So just make sure you like, cause it can have no limits. Why is this not? Hello, hello, what are you doing? Okay, I'm just moving in a little circle. I might need to increase the radius in fact as well. Okay, come on. Okay, cool. I moved in a circle around it and it's gone. Let me do the same to this. Okay, that's gone as well, fantastic. Um, yep, okay. Actually, whoa. Why is that? Let me turn on the minus thing, because this is, yeah, so that is a thing. I think I did that with sculpt mode, actually. Let me just turn that back, actually, a little bit. Okay, so um, let me just go to edit mode and let me just bring this back. Oh my God, let me just turn off a proportional editing mode and let me just bring it back. So that is a disadvantage of sculpt mode because you can run into circumstances where you do that unintentionally. And yeah, okay, cool. Let me just, okay, let me just move that to there. Right on top of that, okay, cool. Uh, and this right here can go on top of there. Cause we are, I'm just gonna try doing one thing. This skirt isn't the best cause it's actually two meshes, which isn't so good. Like it really should just be joined there, um, but it's not. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to do one more thing. I'm gonna press A to select everything here. And I'm just going to, actually no. Uh, 
Okay, actually, um, let me just select these three, turn on proportional editing, press G, and let me just scroll in just to make it a little bit bigger, and that should be okay, yep. Okay, yep, yep, okay, so yep, that should be okay. Okay, so let me go to wireframe mode. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select around this area here. And I'm just going to go uh, merge by distance. Okay, so yep, yeah, so I just removed some vertices. Um, you can increase this merge distance, uh, but you don't want to go too crazy with it. Uh, 0, 0. Uh, yep, yeah, I can decrease it even more. Yeah, maybe like that much. I'd say that much is okay. I don't know if it'll actually help, um, but I think it'll make the skirt less annoying. Okay, yeah, so now it's done. Okay, so what we're gonna do is the final thing we're gonna do with this is we're going to just apply those shape keys. So you can apply them. You don't need to apply them, honestly. You can just leave them as they are because we don't actually need to use them. Actually, we will need to apply them. So let me delete the basis shape key, then delete the expand skirt shape key to kind of apply them like that. Okay, so um, we've kind of done that. We've kind of just uh, merged by distance because we wanted to make these two, these things like here, these vertices, because there's two layers of vertices. Basically there's a band and then there's the skirt and we kind of wanted to fuse them together. I don't know if we got all the vertices, um, but that's why we merged by distance. And we can see right here that we don't have any clipping going on, which is pretty good indeed, actually. But there's one problem here. You can see how the skirt is kind of, like the band itself is kind of not really even close. It's, it's just like, it's like poking out a ton. Okay, so there's, there's a really easy way to do that. And we'll just be using shrimp, shrink wrap. So let me just um, add a modifier, add the, so make sure you select the skirt mesh, add a modifier, shrink wrap. And you want to do above surface again, you want to do offset 0 0.001. And here you want to target, um, let me just make sure that every other one of these cubes is on. Yep, okay. And you want to target the Victoria 8 mesh. Okay, so, and like you thought, we're going to have to be creating another vertex group. So let me create a, a fitting um, vertex group here. And let me just uh, make this the fitting vertex group. Okay, so there's nothing going on, but what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna go to weight print mode. And we're gonna do, use a small trick. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use this um, gradient, make sure that the weight is one. Sorry, let me just turn up the strength actually. Um, yeah, cause I'm, I'm just gonna angle my gradient. So I'm gonna go at a slight angle cause the dress is, a the skirt is a little bit like that. So let me just angle it slightly like this maybe. Um, yeah, that's decent I'd say. Let me just check how it looks. We can also fix that with, um, so let's just have a look. Okay, ooh, that's a bit much actually. It's okay, but like I'm gonna go with 0 0.005. <clears throat> I'm just gonna try to smooth out that gradient a little bit. So I'm gonna go to weight paint and I'm just going to go uh, space bar. Uh, you can go weights and you can go smooth weights because that is too much. 0 0.5, how much is 0 0.5? Eh? Let me just check it in object mode. I might also delete the black area, I think. That might be one thing. So let me just turn this off and let me just uh, hide the Victoria 8 mesh. And I'm just gonna select this center point here and I'm gonna delete it just so we have a clean kind of mesh. And now let's try to take, bring this mesh back. And now let's try turning this on. Okay, that's better. That's a lot better, I'd say. Uh, 0.004 maybe. Yeah, okay, that, that looks okay. Okay, so I think I might just apply this modifier. So before I do that, remember you need to click on the skeleton itself first. Click on Control A and all transforms. 
And then what we're gonna do is also apply the armature modifier here and then apply the shrink wrap. Okay, so that is probably decent. Um, I would say that's good enough, but we're also gonna just do a little bit of sculpting on it just with the inflate brush. And I'm just gonna go along here and just kind of make it a little bit, wait, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Let me go to this, to sculpt mode again. And oops, sculpt mode, I said. And let me just turn it to plus and just kind of go along here. And just make it a little bit less, um, let's say, less um, like crumpled in, I feel like. I feel like it's a little bit too crumpled in. Let me just uh, also make that area a little bit more straight. Yep. Okay, yeah. I'd say that's probably good enough. Yeah, I think that's probably as good as, as, good as we're gonna get, uh, honestly. I might, might as well sculpt. Uh, sculpt this mode, yeah, so just make sure that is fine. And yep, okay, so that's good enough. Okay, so we've kind of just applied the um, rubber band kind of thing. We kind of made it squish against the body, which is good. Okay, so now the next step we're gonna do is we're just gonna finish off with the gloves and the um, stocking. So let's just do that. So let me grab the legs so right leg stocking and left leg stocking. Okay, so now I'm just gonna move this. I might, no, I think that's actually a good scale. So what I might do is let me hide the one of these. So I just am doing the right leg and I'm just going to move it. Oops, um, let me just, so I've applied that already. So let me just, um, Alt P, click, click on the mesh, click Alt P and clear parent. Okay, so I click on the mesh, click on Alt P, clear parent to take out the parent. Now when I move the skeleton itself, you can see I can do it without kind of ruining it. So I just wanna match the top of the leg here. Okay, I'm just matching the top of the leg as much as possible. Don't worry if it's not an exact fit, which is fine. Okay, that's good, yeah. Okay, so now from here, I'm just gonna to go to pose mode uh, I'm going to select the skeleton. So select the skeleton and go to pose mode. Okay, so now I'm just going to rotate it. So R, Z, okay, now that's fine. R, X, R, Y it is, it looks like. Yep. Okay, so it looks like it's probably going to have to go like that. R, Z, maybe like that. I want to kind of make this boot straight though. So I want to R, X, and R, Z, R, Y maybe. Yeah, R, Y. And just, but I'll rotate this, I'll press Control Z. I'll rotate this part just a little more. Just a little more that way. Yep, okay. R, Y maybe. I don't know why it resets every time I click it. Um, R, Y. Yeah, because we just want to pose it as close as possible. Again, just pose it as close as possible. And then we'll try to match it after that. Okay, yeah, so I think that's probably good enough. Control Z, uh, R, Y. Um, let me also turn on screencast keys. Okay, so I'd say that's probably close enough. Let's do the shrink wrap on this. So let's just click on this, add a modifier, shrink wrap. Let's change it to above surface. Let's change the target to Victoria 8 mesh, offset 0 0.01 and vertex group. Let's add a vertex group. Um, and actually this is, <laughs> this is okay, except for this foot area here. So, because the, the stocking itself is actually like shrink wrapped, it looks decent. In fact, you could probably go 0 0.001 and shrink wrap that part, but the boot itself is not good. That's why we need to create this fitting vertex group again and just do the same thing. So just change it to fitting and cool. And let's just paint it until we get it. So weight paint mode and let's change the back to the brush. Let's change back my strength to like 0.1-ish 
and let's go around and just do this. We might need to use uh, sculpt mode, I'd say. We might need to use sculpt mode with the inflate brush. So let's just have a look. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I'll just go around this boot here. We'll attach the boot. Yep, okay, just sculpting around it. Or well, not really sculpting, just adding some color. And we'll just paint here. Okay, 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 okay. So, yeah, I think some of these areas I will not be able to use. Um, I will not be able to use that, but let's just keep going around a little bit. Let me zoom in. Okay, okay, okay. Yep. I think that should be okay there. Let's just get this part here, because this part is probably going to be hard to use sculpt mode on, because we might accidentally ruin the boot. So I just want to at least get this edge right here. Okay. And we are going to be deleting the mesh here anyway, so the legs, so it doesn't really matter um, too much. Um, okay, let's just bring it around. Okay, um, okay, yeah, we're doing it, we're doing it. Okay, good. I will just do this here. Okay, I'll just go around this here now. Yep, should be pretty easy. We distorted the boot slightly, but we can go fix that later. Um, cool. Okay. Okay, we're going upwards. Okay, I think I'm gonna do the rest of this with sculpt mode because this looks very difficult to do. I'll do as much as I can, but this looks a little bit impossible. It's getting close. Actually, we might be able to, I don't know. <laughs> I'll see if we can pull it off. Um, I might turn up my brush a little bit, just make it a bigger brush and we'll see how much we can do with that leg. Okay, because that is a problem here with um, weight paint mode. Using um, it's that like we can't go past a certain we can't like once we get this red here, we can't go past that. But actually, it's actually doing okay. Once I expanded my brush a little bit, it's not too bad, I would say. Okay, boom, done. Okay, okay, we're doing good, okay, we're doing good, okay, going there, and this will clip really badly, you'll see in a second, that's why we kind of need to use uh, the mask modifier. So, and you can see that this is more reliable than sculpt mode because like it doesn't cause the the mesh to like go uh, hugely above i would say so yeah we can use another shrink wrap uh, just to shrink wrap the top as well but i think this should be okay yep that should be fine it's looking a little blocky but it's okay um let's just do this final part underneath the shoe Hello, hello, let's do this, okay. Just reduce my brush size just to do that. Okay. Okay, I'm just going in little circles around that. May need to increase it a little bit. Okay, 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 we're going good. And I'll just do this final part. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, cool. That's good. Uh, can we do this foot is the question. Can we do this foot? Let me increase my strength here. Um, well, well, well. I 
might not actually do that with that. I'll just use sculpt mode for that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to go back to object mode. I'm gonna click on the skeleton itself, control A, all transforms. And then let me click on this leg here. I'll, up, I'll click on the armature modifier, click on apply. I'll click on the shrink wrap modifier, click on apply. And now that is fantastic. Now we can just uh, use sculpt mode here. I'll use the inflate brush again, and I'll just increase this. Just make sure it's on plus and come on. Come on, do this. Okay, yes, I'm just drawing circles around it. Let me just increase the brush size again. Uh, okay, okay, yep. Okay. Okay, it is done. Fantastic. Good, good, good. Okay, so that leg is finally done. Let's go to the next one. And let's just do the same thing. So let me just change the left leg. And let me move the skeleton itself. Don't move the mesh. Try to move the skeleton, if anything else. Wait, actually, before we do that, let me just click on this mesh, Alt P, clear parent, okay? Because then it won't move with the skeleton anymore, which is good. Okay, so let's just match the top part. So remember, you have to match the top part, nothing else. So just we'll go numpad one to go to front view, make sure it's the same height on the leg. Yeah, roughly around there, I'd say, is good. And that looks good. Okay, and let me just move it backwards. So G, Y, to move it slightly backwards. And yeah, that's good enough. We can do that top part as well a little bit later, but let me just match the main parts of the leg first. Okay, so let me just go to pose mode. So I'll just try moving this bone instead, R, Y. I'll try to match it with this one instead. R, Y. Okay, cool. Looks good. And R, Y, okay, good. R, Z, I just want it to move to that side a little bit. Yep, R, X, I just want it down a little bit. Um, R, Y, R, Z. Okay, cool, that looks good. Okay, so that looks like good enough that we posed it. So let me just uh, use weight paint mode and the shrink wrap modifier to shrink wrap it as well as possible. Shrink wrap uh, above surface, and then offset is 0 0.01. And we have to target the Victoria H mesh. Okay, cool. Um, but we also need to add the fitting group. Okay, and let me change this to fitting, and let's just do some weight painting. Go to weight paint. Yeah, this brush size looks good, and I might just paint as much as possible. Let me turn it down a little bit. That's a little bit much even. Wait, have I turned up my strength a lot? Yes, I have. Let me turn down my strength a little bit because I don't want it to be that high to 0.1-ish. And let me just turn down my brush size. Okay, I probably need a higher weight for this, um, but that's okay. Okay. Let me just turn up the brush size a little bit, just so I get some control over it. So I can paint this entire section. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, okay. Let me check I'm still recording. Yep, cool. Um, okay. We're just getting this final section painted in. Okay, and we'll just do this. Okay, let me just make sure I haven't painted the boot because the boot should not be really painted. But let me just actually go in. Okay, let me just put down my brush for that size. Almost done, almost done. Okay. Okay. Almost done here. Okay, so still just weight painting with a large brush size. Let me turn up my strength actually, because it's just too slow. Okay, yeah, so this area looks like something I'm gonna have to use sculpt mode for because 
it's not coming out no matter what. So I will have to use sculpt mode for it. Well, this area, because like even though it's like a weight paint of one, which is red, it's not coming out of the thing because it's just too far out. That's okay. So we'll just use um, sculpt mode to fix the small errors, basically. But we'll try to fix most with uh, just weight painting. Cool, cool, cool. Almost there, almost there. Okay. Yep, okay, let me just get that area. Just paint mini circles around it. And this, and this too. Okay, cool. And let's just paint some mini circles around this. Yeah, I don't think we're going that. Let's paint some mini circles around this. Yep, okay, we're gonna paint there, there, there. Okay. Just moving around with the middle mouse button. Okay. Come on, come on. Let me just bring this down a little bit. It's a little bit hard not to paint just the boot. Um, okay. That's fine. Actually, I'll just try to paint as much as possible. But if I get the boot, I will just unpaint that basically. Um, okay. Let me just try to paint the inside there, even though nobody will really ever see this part. Um, just trying to get that painted in. Just bringing it down. Okay. Okay, so I don't think I'll get that one easily. Okay, so I'll just get as much as I can. Okay, cool. I think that's probably the most I'm gonna get there. So what I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna select here, this entire boot, press L, and I'm gonna to go to the materials tab, and I'm just, wait, not materials, I'm gonna change it to this um, vertex groups tab, and I'm gonna assign a weight of zero to the boot. So the boot has zero uh, weight paint. So if I just look at it in uh, weight paint mode, you'll see that only that, that other part is painted. I might use sculpt mode there. Okay, but let's just do this final part here on the boot here. Okay, yep, a little bit of sculpt mode is needed. Yeah, no, no, sculpt mode. I'm just gonna use sculpt mode there. Um, yeah, okay, yeah, I think that's okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing again. So I'm just gonna click on the skeleton itself, click on Control A, all transforms. And then what I can do is I can just apply, click on the mesh and apply those two modifiers. Okay, so apply the top one and then apply the shrink wrap. Okay, so now I'm just gonna use sculpt mode. Sculpt mode with the inflate brush, just to patch just the final few small errors basically. So this one here, let me just paint some small circles around that. You can see they're gradually just going away like magic. Come on. Um, okay, that one's done. And just this small one here. If I can just get around it. Um, let me increase my brush size a little bit. Okay, there we go. That one's done. Cool, and let's just do the side of the foot. Decrease my brush size. Yep, easy, see? Easy patch. And this one around this boot on the bottom. Okay, just putting some circles around it. And you can see it's slowly shrinking. Yep, yep, okay, that's done, yep, cool. Uh, that's perfect. Okay, so we did those two legs, which were kind of like the hardest ones. Now let me just click on I click on this mesh, click Alt P, clear parent, and now I can. I don't even need this uh, leg skeleton anymore, do I? Yes, I do not need that leg skeleton. 
so I can just delete this leg skeleton um, because these ones are actually just fitted to that. If you really want, you can shrink wrap it. Yeah, why not? I'll do another shrink wrap. Shrink wrap and we'll go above surface um, and we'll go 0.01. I'll target Victoria 8 mesh. Okay, and I'll just use a vertex group. I'll create another fitting vert. Like I'll call it uh, top fitting. Okay, and I'll just make this one top fitting and I'll just make it 0 0.01 actually. And I'll just use white paint just to use a gradient. And I'll paint down. Uh, where is my strength? Let me turn on my strength actually here. And we can just shrink wrap that area. Okay, actually, yep, yeah, something like that. Yep, yeah, because that will shrink wrap it that area just to that, which is perfect. And we can just apply it. So I'll just apply this. And what I'll do here is I'll just use sculpt mode and just in inflate brush just to bring it back. Then you can see that it's almost like the stockings are on the legs, which is exactly what we want. Fantastic. So that leg's done. And I'll just go here. I'll add that shrink wrap modifier. Add the fitting. Uh, top fitting vertex group by just click, clicking the plus icon and just renaming that. Then I'm just going to um, change it to above surface, change the target to, to Victoria 8 mesh, offset 0 0.001 meters, vertex top fitting. Okay, and then I'll just go to weight paint mode. I will use that gradient. I'll just make sure the gradient is, a right, is at the right angle. Yep, I'll just bring it down a little bit. Yep, okay, yeah, that's fine. I'd say that's a bit much actually. Let me just put it like that, I'd say. Okay. Um, something like that, I'd say. Yeah, good enough. Okay, and let me just apply it and just use sculpt mode with the inflate brush and just inflate it in the areas that need to be inflated. There we go. And now there is no clipping. Fantastic. And it conforms perfectly to the legs. Okay, so uh, let's finish off with the gloves and then I'll show you that. Okay, so let's finish off with the gloves which are right here. Okay, so we'll do the left glove first or the right glove, right glove. I'll just double click on it to rename it. And let's get this, let's unhide the torso skeleton. Okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to make sure it's on the hand as well as possible. So, okay, so it's kind of like that. Okay, so I might just pose the, might try to get it on the wrist. Okay, so I'll just try to position it close to the wrist. Yeah. I'd say close enough because we're just going to be moving the bone a little bit. Okay, so now we have that. Click on the skeleton, go to pose mode, and just rotate the bone. So we want to do, go from the top down, basically. So R Z to rotate it. Okay, wait, numpad three, numpad. Wait, let me just click on the opposite one and negative X, and let's just go R Z. Okay, R Y. Just to bring it upwards, RZ, okay, RY, okay, perfect, perfect, okay, that's on the wrist, RY, RZ, okay, cool, um, RY, fantastic, okay, cool, so that's probably the closest we're going to get on the wrist there, I feel like RX, yeah, RY, R, Y, R, Z, K, R, Y, R, Z. Okay, because I want to get closest to, because the hardest fingers are going to be like the pinky. 
as you can see that it's kind of moved out of place. Okay, that's cool. So we did that one. Let's do the elbow R. Okay, so R Y, just to bring it out a little bit. Okay, R Z, R X, R Y. Okay. Wait, oops, R Y, bring it upwards. Okay, fantastic. Okay, that should be okay-ish, I feel like. R Y, R Z. I'm gonna move it to the left a little bit, just preemptively, because I know the hardest finger is going to be definitely the definitely the finger to pose it into. Okay, so let's try to do the thumbnail. So we'll just wait R Z. I'll just rotate it that way. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so this is actually a good position. R Okay, R Y to rotate into Y, R Z. Come on, R X. Okay, R X. Okay. Maybe I'll use G a little bit. So you can use G as well. Uh, that will morph it a little bit. Uh, can I just bring this just higher? R X. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's going to be close enough, I'd say. So Rx is the perfect one there. Okay, R, let's try Rx. Nope, Ry. So you kind of just need to test what ones are perfect for what. Rz a little bit. Rz. Because these ones are especially tedious because they are gloves and gloves are extremely hard. Rx, Ry. Okay. Yeah, good enough. Um, just as long as they're on the finger, is I'm just kind of happy with that. Oops, is that the right one? R, B, R, oh wait, let's try this. We need to try the top bone. Okay, cool. R, Z. So you need to align it in the X, Y, and Z axes. So R, Y, R, Y. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Okay, let's get the top bone of this one again. So R Y R Z. Okay, R X R X. Come on. Okay, R Y. Bring it right down. R Y R Z. Actually, let me just bring it back to the right hand side. And this one is actually almost done. So the pinky is usually the hardest one. So, because, yeah, well, at least from experience, I have tried this model before. Okay, and we'll just align it like that. Yeah, so the gloves are actually almost perfectly fitted. It may not quite look like it yet. <laughs> Let me control Z that. Uh, but um, just a little weight painting will get this um, shrink wrapped perfectly. Okay, so actually, we'll do the weight painting right now. So, let me just click on this and add the modifier. You know, the drill, shrink wrap. Uh, above surface, uh, target Victoria 8, uh, offset 0 0.01, and let's just change the vertex group. Let's make a vertex group fitting, and let's just change this to fitting. And let's do some weight painting. So let's go weight paint, and let me just change back to this brush here, changing my strength down to like 0 0.1, and let's just weight paint. Okay, I'm using the shift uh, middle mouse button to pan up to the area that I want. Okay, you might need to use shift tilde and WASD here to get to a good position so you can actually see the glove properly. Okay, and don't worry, there is a hole in the middle of the glove that is intended. I thought it wasn't the first time and I did panic. Okay, cool. As long as you've got the major components of the glove like posed, that is the key part. Because then your shrink wrap will be so much, so much better. If you get the key parts of the glove done, then it'll be so much easier for you to shrink wrap, which is why it is so important that you pose it as close as possible first before you do anything else. Okay, so before you do anything else, please, please, please pose it correctly. 
Okay. And let's just keep on going. Do, 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 do. Okay. And now we can just paint this area pretty legibly. See, like just painting it. Because we got the major landmarks down. So all that's left is just, just to paint a little bit. And it's already on its way. Okay, let me just paint around here. Yep, cool. Fantastic. Okay, and I'll just paint around here as well. Um, control Z a little bit. I do want to decrease my brush size. Just paint that area in. Okay, that area as well. Okay, cool. And then just that in between area. Fantastic. Okay, now we can just continue to paint. I'm just painting these areas until like it actually it just aligns with the finger holes. And now we can just shrink wrap the rest. Easy. Pretty easy? I think so. <laughs> well, not too easy, but uh, the weight painting, like once you've done it, once you've posed it correctly, it becomes so much easier. I've just increased my brush size with the right bracket button on my keyboard, just so I can paint easily here around this wrist. Wait, let me control Z that because I don't really need that much weight paint there. I just need it to come up over here actually. Might need to focus my weight painting, turn up my strength here to 0 0.2 and I'll just try to weight paint as much as possible because here it seems like it might be a bit hard actually. Oops, not so much there. So that is just uh, the end part. That's just the um, bottom part just poking out. I might just use weight paint. I might use uh, sculpt mode to fix it. Yeah, I think I want to use sculpt mode to fix the rest. Okay, so now let me just go back to object mode and we'll apply, so first of all, we'll click on the skeleton itself. We'll, we'll click on the skeleton, like the black bones. Click on control A, all transforms. Then I will click on the glove itself and go to the modifiers tab, apply this first one, apply the second shrink wrap. Now let's get to the business of sculpt moding. This tends to distort the mesh actually. That's the only problem with it. Okay, cool. And get this area. Come on. Come on. Give me this area. Okay, cool. Okay, so I might just, and for the rest of this here, I'm just going to go to edit mode. I'm going to use proportional editing, I think. So I'm just going to, I'm going to turn off proportional editing here. Wait, okay, okay. So, ah, I see, I see what's going on. So there's just not enough vertices here. I feel like is the problem. So I, I can just manually edit them one by one here until I get what I want. Let me just turn on um, wireframe mode. I'm just gonna check what is going on. So this here, okay, okay. So this here, I think this here is the problem. It needs to be above. Let me just check. Yep, it is. Okay, so let me just, Move it back down a little bit. Wait, actually, no, no, no. I'm gonna move it across, I feel like. And this here, I'm gonna move it upwards. Move this glove to the left. Just expand it. I'm just making it a little bit bigger because these two connect. There's not actually enough. There's not enough vertices to connect these properly. So it just kind of, has this awkward thing here where I have to, where I'm forced to move the vertices just like this so I can kind of make it work. That's okay, you can add like a subdivision surface modifier to this. This is a really low poly glove um, or yeah, whatever really. Um, yep, just moving these upwards. Okay, cool. I think we're about done. Almost. Okay, cool. 
And yeah. Wait, is there any, any other vertices behind that? Maybe this one? Okay, let me just... Okay. Okay, I'm just going to move it inward so it doesn't look awkward. And this one outwards so it doesn't look awkward either. Okay, cool. Let me just look in here. Maybe I'll make this one. Let me just see where it is. Okay, I'll just bring it out, I think. Yep, something like that. Yeah, I'd say that's good enough, honestly. Yep, okay, so let me just go to material preview mode. That glove looks good. <laughs> that glove definitely looks pretty good. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I'll probably just call that glove as done. So remember, we need to click on the glove itself, the glove mesh, Alt P, clear parent. Okay, now we'll do the same with the other glove. Okay, so let's just un let's let's hide this glove and let's unhide uh, the other glove here, which is the right the left glove. And I'll just kind of put it in the correct position. So I'm going to put it here on the wrist as closely as possible. Okay, cool. Yep, and I'll actually just move it backwards a little bit actually. Okay, cool. So yep, that looks fine. So I'm moving around my position in the viewport so I can, when I move it, when I press G, um, that it will, it will, it adjusts to your position in the move, port, move uh, into the viewport. Okay, so now let's just do control Z. Uh, let's go R, Z, because I know that'll be the problem. R, yep. Okay, so R, Y, just to adjust it up and down. I just want it just a little bit above the surface. And then Rx. Yeah, just something like that. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, let me just click on the hand burn now. And R, R, Z, that, yeah. Oof, perfect, perfect. If you're just like that, that's perfect. Okay, now let me just go R, Z, then R, Y. Okay, Rx, Rx, okay, Rz, maybe just a little bit to the left side there, Rz, no, I think that's perfect. Okay, cool, and let's get this one, Ry, ooh, you might want to control Z, R Ry, just bring it down a touch, I'd say. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Just so R, Z a little bit, maybe. Oh okay, yeah, cool. That's good. So now let's just control Z and R, Z. Yeah, perfect. R, X. Okay, yep. <clears throat> the, the more work we do here, the less work we have to do later is pretty, pretty much the motto. So if we kind of compose it as well as possible, we want to do that as much as possible. Okay, so R, Y, R, Z, to rotate it in the Z axis, R, X, but R, Y, just to bring it upwards a little bit. Yeah, good enough. And let's grab this bone, R, Z, R, Y, R, Y. Okay, good enough. And the final one, which is a pinky. So R, Z, R, Y. And basically I'm compensating for the pinky mostly. I'm just thinking of the pinky. I'm always thinking of the pinky for these gloves because the pinky is really hard to get. The thumb can be adjusted slightly more than the pinky can. So that's why I'm really thinking about the pinky foot first. And then every other bone can kind of just uh, adapt to it. R, 
R Y. Yep, good enough. R X. Yep. Alright, good enough. Okay, so I think I'm going to now um, use weight paint mode. So I'm just going to go to back to object mode, click on the mesh, uh, add the modifier again, shrink wrap, uh, grab the fitting group, fitting, and then I'm just going to um, go to the modifiers tab, change it to Victoria 8 mesh, uh, change the off offset to 0 0.01, 0 0.01, change it to above surface, and change it to the fitting group. So we can just quickly white paint it. Because I did want to demonstrate how it is on a more complex thing because, well, the thing is like the bra and the panties are really easy to do because they're already flat and it's just like this here, it's a challenge. Like gloves are really a big challenge. Wait, I think my, I think my, my weight is a little too high. Let me change it to 0 0.1 ish just because I want it to be just right. I don't want it to be too, to be too high. Otherwise we might run into some small issues. Okay. So let me just, yep, cool. Fantastic. Because we want to paint as less as possible. Less is better. So we don't distort the shape and the creases and the details and geometry of the mesh basically. Okay, so um, let's keep going along. We're almost there. We're almost there. Don't give up hope. Um, let me just grab this. I'm just using the um, middle mouse button to get a better view of some of these here. Yep, it's coming in, it's coming in. Just making way for that MMA glove style glove using control Z a little bit because I just want to grab that wrist. Give me that wrist. Yes, good. Give me that wrist indeed. Yep, okay, we got it. We got the glove part of it. Okay, but the final annoying bit is like the mask modifier because, yeah, because that isn't so good. Okay, just mouse around to kind of get a good angle to kind of just keep going at it. I might fix that with edit mode and sculpt mode as you saw I did before with the other glove. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna grab this part as well. Come above. I feel like this is like a weird like <laughs> suction pack kind of thing, um, the shrink wrap. It's just like uh, trying to put things on top of other things. Okay, let, let's keep painting. Okay. Cool. Cool indeed. Okay, cool. Let's just paint that area because that finger is supposed to be non-jagged. Thanks. Okay, just a little bit there. A little bit here. A little bit here, 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 and yes, just closing that up. Okay, cool. Fantastic. Okay, so now this part here. Hmm, good enough. I think I'll edit that in edit mode, actually. So, yeah, the weight paint's done. Let me go to, let me apply the weight paint now. So, I'm just going to, so again, click on the skeleton first, control A, all transforms. And then let's just go to the modifiers tab by clicking on the mesh, go on the blue wrench icon, and you want to apply that, that modifier and apply this modifier as well. So apply both, th both of them. We can actually delete the skeleton, but I won't do it just yet. I'll just go to edit mode and I will just grab some of these vertices. Let me just go for, I think that's a little bit too high actually. Feels like it's a little bit too high. Okay, I'm just in wireframe mode, just because it's easier to edit. A 
Okay, uh, let me change to material preview mode so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay, cool. And let me just bring it back a little bit. Okay, yeah, it's a little bit distorted. There's not to worry though. Okay, cool. You know, I'll say that's probably good enough, honestly. You can spend some more time just going through, um, but um, I don't want to use too much. I don't want to be around here too long. Just, okay. I want to edit this general shape to be legit, as they say. Okay, looks fine. You can use sculpt mode here as well. It's just, I want to be more exact here. That's why I'm just using um, edit mode just to make sure that everything is correct. It's just that the, all the vertices look legit. Okay, yeah, I'll say that's probably good enough, honestly. Uh, yes, okay, yeah, good enough. Let's check check it in material preview mode. Yeah, that glove looks pretty decent, I'd say. So I now I'm just going to uh, click on the, the glove mesh, Alt P, clear parent, and now I can just delete this um, armature modifier, and now I can just show that we've attached everything. Fantastic. Okay. So now here comes. Wait, actually. Oh well, we'll attach the hair later. Here comes the point of truth. Okay. So we have to click on the. Um, the, the Victoria 8 mesh, then the jacket, then we go to weight paint mode. So make sure that the last selected thing is the jacket. So click on the body mesh, then shift select, and make sure the yellow highlight is on the, the jacket. Then we go weight, transfer weights, and we make sure it is on by name. Okay, so and all layers, that's fine. And then the next thing we need to make sure is click on the body mesh and click on the glove and just go uh, weight paint, same thing. Weights, transfer weights, make sure it's by name or layers, which it is, fantastic. Let's go click on the body mesh, click on shift select the uh, glove, and then just go weight paint, uh, weights, transfer weights, make sure it's by name or layers. Uh, let's do the same with the skirt, weights, paint, weights, transfer weights, and by name or layers, fantastic. Okay, let's go click on the body mesh, click on the um, left leg, weight paint, trans weights, transfer weights. And you'll see there's gonna be an issue. Basically, there's gonna be huge, huge, huge clipping. Um, shift select, okay, um, body mesh, shift select that. Uh, weight paint, weights, transfer weights. Because I've done this once already, I know that it is. So by name or layers again, and yes, so now, okay, so now we actually need to parent them. So we need to select all these meshes here. Um, so all these meshes here, in fact, so everything except that hair thing, because we're gonna take care of that hair real soon. And just so shift select the body here, um, the Victoria 8 mesh, control P. Wait, what the heck? That's not right. Actually, yeah, so actually select all of them, then unhide the Victoria 8 mesh, hold the control key, make sure the last selected thing is your skeleton, control P and armature deform. Okay, so uh, we actually see something, some errors cropping up already in that jacket, which is not so good. Um, did I move that mesh at all? Let me go to pose mode and Alt, Alt G, Alt R, Alt S. Okay, but that's fine, that's fine. Okay, okay, it's okay though, I can, I can just fix that real quick. But the more important thing is if I click on this uh, mesh here and I go G, yeah, so first of all, I click on the skeleton and I press G to move it and it moves with it. So that's the most important thing. Now, the final, that we have to check the other tests though. So we go R, okay, so that is a little weird, honestly. Um, also, if I move the hands, how does that work? 
Well, it's not too bad actually. Like, yes, you, you can see like sometimes it goes like that. And that's why we have to, that's why a lot of game models and how we're gonna do it is we're gonna hide basically. We're gonna hide anything inside there just so that it doesn't get in the way. Okay, and let's look at the, let's look at the, the um, legs. Yeah, <laughs> the legs are pretty bad as well. And when I move this hips, so you can see that the butt kind of sticks out, which is not so great. Okay, so if you want to, like if you wanted to animate like taking off clothes and stuff, you really need to use like a shrink wrap modifier. So you need to go back, use shrink wrap modifier and just like go to the extreme point in pose mode and then just paint the areas that you think are a problem. Okay, or you can just continue to use shrink wrap. It doesn't really matter. But anyway, we're not gonna be doing that. The clean, so we're gonna be doing a cleaner method. Um, obviously this won't work if you're taking off clothes or anything, uh, but here's how to do it. Okay, so we click on this body mesh here. And basically the thing is, we want to have the areas that are gonna be shown. So we, we want to click on add modifier and we wanna add mask modifier. And the mask modifier is right here. Okay, so we need to create a vertex group for this. So we need to click, make a new vertex group and we're gonna call this uh, hidden or hidden uh, mask, mask hidden. Cool, why not? Okay, mask hidden. And what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna paint. So I'm gonna make this mask hidden. And obviously you can see that, um, that that's what happens, but we're gonna click on this invert button. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go to edit mode. So click on the mesh and go to edit mode. And we're just going to turn on this um, wireframe mode. And we're just gonna select any areas which are, which are the clothing, because of the areas that we wanna get rid of. In fact, let me go to press not bad one and go to front view and just select anything that is within this kind of thing right here. So I'm using the lasso tool, the select lasso tool. And I'm just going to select everything in between here. Just anything that is that would be showing. And now I'm just going to go to the um, vertex groups tab Assign this a weight of one. Okay, so now you can see that it hides everything of the mesh that isn't there. So basically, this should limit the clipping. And we also need to do the same thing here. So let's go to edit mode again. So pressing tab, or you can go to edit mode. And with the other thing we need to do is we need to hide this section here. So it's where the legs are. So just anything here. So numpad one again, numpad one, and just these things here. Anything inside here needs to be deleted. You can hold shift key to uh, increase your selection. Okay, and basically I'll assign them to a weight of one as well for mask hidden. Make sure you're selecting mask hidden and you press assign with a weight of one. Okay, let's go back to object mode and basically uh, we might, I might give them one. I might just go numpad one and let me just go here. And I'll just select this top vertex sex here. And I'll just assign that to a weight of zero basically. So let me just go hold the control key to deselect these other random bits that I accidentally selected. And I'll just make this an maybe a weight of 0 0.1 or something. Okay, actually no, let's just make it a zero weight of zero for mask hidden. And let me just see this uh, in object mode. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, so we can see that's good. Um, we might need to give back a little bit here as well though, and maybe a little bit there. Um, let's go back to edit mode. And we'll just, we can use weight paint as well, but let me just go to this and numpad one. I'll just select a little bit. I'll select a little bit more than I should. So maybe just like that part and I'll assign that a weight of zero. And maybe like this part here, assign that a weight of zero. Maybe just this part here and I'll assign that a weight of zero. 
and then that won't be hidden. Okay, so let me go back to object mode and we should almost be done. Okay, yep, so that's inside there. Um, you'll probably have to add like a shrink wrap modifier to the gloves, honestly, but uh, let me just uh, unhide this part as well. <laughs> let me, I noticed one more thing, which is if I click on this and I go to edit mode and let me just unhide this part here, especially on the front. I'll just select this part here, I guess. I guess I'll just hold the control key and I'll just deselect that part. Control, just make sure everything is, come on, <laughs> control. Come on, there's still one point selected there. That shouldn't be selected. Let me go back to wireframe mode, hold the control key. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, so now I'll just assign that a weight of zero and go to object mode. And now you can see that we have kind of just hidden those areas. So now when we go to pose mode here, you'll see that it works just fine. Okay, so there's no, none of that clipping. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> I don't know what that is actually. But anyway, that's kind of beside the point. I can kind of just tweak that later. I'm pretty sure that's the jacket itself just screwing up. Don't know why the jacket's, jacket's screwing up, but the jacket's screwing up. Um, yeah, I just think it just can't move that much is the thing. I think it's just stretching too much with those ones. But that's okay. Um, I think that's more of a jacket problem and <laughs> DVD mesh is just not being great. But you can see that it looks really good. Let me just go to uh, material preview mode. Um, and again, if you want to animate something taking off clothes, you'll probably have to use, um, you'll probably have to use like a shrink wrap through the whole time that you're taking off the clothes on the clothing to continually shrink wrap it and just uh, weight paint the areas that are troublesome. Okay, but if we just look at this, we can sit backwards now and there's no clipping. Yep, so that's how we would do it. Okay, so, and any time that you don't, you want that modifier back, so you, you can actually just unhide the, that area. So you can just go to the modifiers tab and just turn it off in render or otherwise then it will come back. So yep, so it's not hidden or well, it's not like deleted permanently, which is a good thing. Oof, Alt-G, Alt-R, Alt-S. Okay, so there's just one thing I did forget about, which is the hair. I forgot about the hair. So let's just attach that real quick, but that's just actually so easy. But let me just unhide this hair skeleton and unhide this hair. So basically, it's pretty easy. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna move this up GZ and I'm just gonna move it on top of her head. I'm kinda, kinda just gonna fit it. Yep, okay. Not bad one. I can scale it up a little bit actually. And let me just go numpad one, GZ, and bring it down. Okay, yep, that looks good, I think. And okay, so from here, what we can do is really, it's, it's really easy. So what we're gonna do is I'm just going to click on this skeleton I'm gonna to go to um, object constraints. I'm gonna to go child of, and I'm going to target the Victoria 8 skeleton, which is just the, uh, what skeleton is it? It's Victoria 8, it's Victoria 8. There it is. And I'm gonna target the head skeleton. Why am I gonna target the head skeleton? Because the head skeleton is this bone right here. Like this bone right here. And basically you can see that it will now move with like it will now move with it. So it's, yeah, it's pretty nice. Yep, like the hair will now move perfectly with it. Okay, so yeah, and you can also uh, animate the hair itself on its own skeleton by just moving these ones here. It's very easy, okay, yep. So now we have finally created lots of different outfits. You can basically like turn off, turn on or off this out these outfits by just clicking on this collection to turn it on or off and it's pretty easy to use, right? So you can just switch this outfit to this one. You can turn off the mask modifier. You could use drivers, but basically that's the rundown on how to create outfits and clothing and how to add them to your naked characters. Okay, um, thank you so much for being here. You are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan, out.